Now to an issue that has a lot of you talking. The governor of Mississippi tweeted yesterday that he plans to sign a bill that would ban transgender athletes from competing on women's sports teams in the state's high schools and universities. This issue has gotten all sorts of attention recently from conservatives who fear that allowing trans girls to compete would be an unfair advantage. It is important to point out that the International Olympic Committee and other sports organizations like the NCAA all have rules allowing trans athletes to compete, which account for any biological differences like testosterone levels. They have science behind it. But that isn't always so easy for high school sports because young trans kids may not be on hormone therapy. So DBL Nation, we want to know what you think. In your opinion, should trans athletes be banned from competing in women's sports? Go to dblvote.com. Tell us what you think. I heard you had a strong opinion on this. Yeah, and I was a little nervous to say it, but I'm just gonna say it. Not on this show. No, I know, that's why I was like, I have to, to have a nuanced conversation about this. Do I want trans rights or human rights? Yes, do I stand up for them? Absolutely. Do I feel inherently that the physiological differences between a man and a woman make it unfair? Yes. Now, I need to educate myself more on terms of the testosterone and estrogen levels and all that, but for high school, when scholarships are at stake, I would have a problem losing out, I'm being very honest about it, to someone who would have, let's say, more muscles just because they were born male. Can I challenge you? Please. Okay, so coming from a student athlete yeah. who- and I'm was, not an athlete, by the way. <laughs> who was offered a, a swimming scholarship. A division and, one scholarship. Yeah, yeah. UCLA. UCLA. Thank you. For, um, I had a different, I had more your opinion back then. Okay. Because this was an issue back then too. I've educated myself and I've learned that uh, the organizations in charge, like the International Olympic Committee and the NC2A, they have the science behind it to make sure that it is fair. So you do have to be transgender for four years. You have to have had transitioned. You had to have gone through hormone therapy to make your testosterone level equal to your peer. Now, they do the same thing when it comes to doping. So I trust them in their science. Mm. When it comes to high school kids, yeah. let's remember that this isn't an epidemic, okay? You don't have trans teenagers left and right competing to steal scholarships from their peers. That's not a thing. Now, if it were a thing, let's say, I try and boil it down to what I would tell Sophie or what I would tell my son, Miles. If you're at the level where you're gonna get a college scholarship, you're gonna have dozens to choose from, just like I did, I'll keep it 100. But I would look at my daughter in her eyes and I would say, listen, uh, if you have this other trans athlete who's gonna take away your scholarship, what's the right thing to do here? You have other colleges to choose from. Mm. You have a future in the Olympics or a future in professional sports where they do make sure that it's an even playing field with science. And lastly, the bigger picture in the present is to make sure that you're inclusive, is to make sure that you're an ally, is to make sure that you lift people up and you always stick up for people that are marginalized because transgender teens are more likely to commit suicide and commit suicide four times more than any other teen out there. So I think that is the bigger lesson in this. There, I think we're the ones making a big deal out of this. What uh, do you think, Al? I, great I, point, I, by I the way. I just think that it, this is a great conversation to have, but I think we're kind of losing the thread here in terms of when we're having it. Uh, we're having this as Texas completely failed to respond to a uh, weather emergency. Mississippi failed to respond to a weather emergency. So what was the first thing they did? Did they try and get on top of that, fix the grid? They lifted bans. Now they, they lifted masks. Now we're not talking about the weather anymore. Yeah, it's a political now diversion. Now we're talking about trans students. Yeah. While a, a lot of your state still does not have fresh water. This is a conversation that deserves breath and deserves a place at the table, but let's make sure that you have a table first. Right, because Erica, you know, we only have 30 seconds, but these are human beings, and it's such a small percentage that right. we're talking about, but we're acting like that they don't have feelings or emotions. Yeah, I appreciate what you said. This is not an epidemic. Um, you know, what is an epidemic amongst the very small percentage of trans people, trans people being killed because they're yeah. trans. Um, that's an epidemic. The, the idea that the rhetoric revolved around protecting young girls. Um, let's talk about protecting young girls from sex trafficking. Let's talk about protecting young girls from the very real issues that plague them on a re very regular basis. But to throw this out there because you know that it's going to mask as 
Al says, the very real epidemics that are happening in the moment is a political ploy. Yeah. Erica, where, where was the protection for our female Olympic athletes? Well said. We are out of time. Let's see what you say at home. 80% of you said that it is un fair wow. should trans athletes uh, be banned from competing in women's sports you say it is unfair all right coming up on dbl comedian sarah silverman is